with the database in place, with the web config modified for the connection string, and with the models in place, we're ready to start writing other code and modify the global ASAX CS file. That file is located in your project we've been working on, right there. And this is actually called when the application is started. And we need to come in and we need to tell the entity framework to stay out of things until we want it to actually do something. And the way we do that is we type in database dot set initializer less than sign and then we use that database connection string we made in the web config file which was hard knocks context greater than sign and then we pass it a parameter of null now let's go ahead and resolve the database error and then the hard knocks context don't worry about that one for now that'll be resolved later but we also need to add a couple of using statements we need to use the name of our project dot models and we need to use the name of our project dot another folder we're going to make we're just going to call that DAL which stands for the data access layer you can call it anything you want and we're going to add one more which allows us to work with database by typing system dot data dot entity so you need to go add those three items to this file so when the application runs this file is called and then it will go ahead and say we're going to set up our database and we're going to handle it working with our connection stream and then we're going to use this information within this file let's go ahead and save it don't build yet because you have errors and then we need to go ahead and come back over to our project and we're going to click on the project name and right mouse click and we need to add a new folder so right mouse click add new folder and we're going to call it DAL and there's nothing in it for right now but that's okay we're going to put stuff in it a little bit later and that's going to allow us to actually work with the database so let's go ahead and work with that folder by right mouse clicking on it sorry I have to keep moving my screen around right mouse click add we're going to choose a new class and now we're going to go ahead and write the file that's going in that folder and we're going to card call that class hard knox context.cs in other words we already have the web config file that says we have a variable or object we're going to work with called hard knox context and it's going to relate back to the database through the connection string well now we need to make an object in our project that we can link with that web config file so whatever the name that web config file had in it which was hard knox context Remember back over here in our web config, we had our connection string, hard knox context. We now want to make a class of that same name so that we can create an object and work with it. Once we come over to here, we need to type in some statements and uh, tell our program what else it can. So I just typed in the project name dot models. Make sure you add that statement. And then we're going to say this class is going to inherit from the DB context class. Now the DB context class has an error on it, so you have to right mouse click and resolve that to bring in system data entity. So this class is now going to be a database object. Since it's a class, let's go ahead and write a constructor public R Knox context. There's the constructor. How do I know it's a constructor? Because it's the name of the class with parentheses on it. And we're going to go ahead and say that this constructor, and we type in the word base, hard, nox, context. And so by putting the word base there, that's used to access members of a base class from a derived class or within a derived class. And then we're going to call a method on that base class that's been overridden possibly by other methods. And we need to go ahead and finish 
that constructor. And we're going to make sure we spell that correctly. So what this is saying is we have our constructor for the Hard Knocks context class. And we said base. that, And we use that base word when we want to override the functionality. But we want that overridden functionality to also occur, which we're overriding with the DB context. So we're going to be able to have that base keyword there, which allows us access members in the DB context class that have been overridden possibly or hidden by members in our subclass. And so we'll leave that empty. Um, and then we come in and we start writing the actual sets, the database sets, for all the information we want to work with in the models. Remember our first model was student majors. And you can't give these the same name. So I'm going to call this students major. And then I'll have my get and my set. And I'm just going to copy and paste. Make sure you go change all these when you're done. Copy and paste. And we'll do that for the majors model. I'll call this major. And then I'll do this for the student model. I'll call this students. Now notice what I'm doing. This is called pluralize. Pluralize. And that is I take one word like majors and then I singularize it or take a singular word and pluralize it. .NET does this, um, but just be aware you cannot have the same name here and here because you're saying make a new object called this of type this. You can't say student there because you already have the student class. Now the job of these DB sets will be to actually hold the data that gets returned back from the query working with the database. Let's save that. Let's build it. And we have no errors, so life is looking good. So now we've created our database link to the web config, and we have our data structure set up to hold data, storing them in the model. The DB set says you're going to have either a collection, you could have zero to many, but this allows you to have multiple records of that model. From here, we're going to um, start working with our views and creating our object of Hard Knox context by calling this constructor. We're going to make our object to now allow us to work with the database and load data up into these data sets.